Do you want to go beyond serving HTML pages? Do you want to create your own API service? Well, then you should take a serious look at Gen. One of my favorite things about Gen is that it makes it easy to separate out route requests sent to a single path based on the method the client is using. For instance, if we have a get method and a post method, well, we would want to treat those very differently, even if it's at the same path. So we're at slash movie and at slash movie, depending if it's a get or a post request, we can have a different function handle both of these scenarios. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other things that Jen has to offer. Jen is a web framework. But don't worry, it is still very fast. It also provides support for middleware, so we can create an entire chain of middleware functions to handle an incoming request. This could be very useful with logging or authorization. It's also crash-free, so if we run into a panic, it's going to be able to recover from it. Uh, we also have JSON validation, so we can check for required values. Uh, we got routes grouping, so say if we want to group a bunch of routes together, Say if it's authorization versus, you know, no authorization required, we can do that. Uh, error management, so we can collect our errors. Uh, we got rendering built in, and it's also uh, extendable. All right, let's take a look at some code. If you don't already have the gen package, go ahead and run your go get command. And as you can see, we already have it. In our first example, we're going to take a look at how we can serve HTML. And then in our second example, we're going to take a look at how we can create our own API. Now, the first function inside the gen package that we're going to take a look at is the default function. This default function is going to return an engine. Now, this engine instance is going to have some middleware. It's going to have some stuff for logging and recovery. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So looking at the engine type, uh, of course, you know, like I said, we're using default, which is going to return our engine. It might actually have been better to use new, which is going to return an engine, but it's not going to have those two pieces of middleware attached to it, which we aren't exactly using this example, but we'll use those in the future. So we're also, of course, going to be able to use the run method, which is going to go ahead and run our server. And then for our templates, uh, we're going to be using load HTML glob. So we're just going to hand out our pattern. So everything inside that templates folder that matches that pattern is going to go and load up. But if we wanted to, we could tell it exactly every single file we wanted to if we wanted to use uh, load HTML files. Um, as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them here, but these are the three, you know, the ones we're focusing on. Back to our code. Like I said, we're going to use router.run. And yes, we do need to pass in an address. And so this is going to be listening for requests. And if we run into an error, we simply just want to go ahead and just shut everything down right off the bat. Uh, we're also going to get access to the get and the post methods. Uh, the great thing about this is it's going to go ahead and take a path and it's going to go ahead and save that path and the function that's going to go ahead and handle that path into a map that our router variable has access to. So uh, this is how it knows um, with this path, with this method, go ahead and use this function to handle it. So as you can see down here, we have the same path. Uh, slash form and slash form, but being their different methods, we can choose different functions to handle them. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first path at slash hello is handled by the get hello uh, function. If we go down to get hello, one thing that you'll notice that these functions, these handlers, they have to have the variable gen dot context. So let's go ahead and here we have our context data type, which has to be passed into all of our handler functions. As you can see, it has many different methods. Uh, for instance, we have the bind JSON, which is going to allow us to grab the JSON off of an incoming request. We also have our HTML method, which is going to allow us to serve HTML. We have the indented JSON and regular JSON methods which can allow us to send JSON. With the indented JSON, it's obviously going to be indented. With regular JSON, it's not. So indented JSON is just much easier to read. Um, so for debugging and for development, this might be easier. But for production, we're going to need to use the JSON because it's going to be a little bit quicker not having to indent everything. Uh, we also have our param method, which can allow us to grab URL keys, uh, grab the values for those. 
And then the one that we're going to be using right now is the string methods. All right. So we're going to use our passed in context and run the method string. This is going to take a HTTP status code as well as a string that's going to be written to the response body. So let's go ahead and run that. And Jen's going to give us some useful information about what templates we got, uh, the different paths that we have, whether it be Git or post, and of course, uh, what port we're running on. So going over to browser slash hello. Hello world. There we go. So on to our next handler. The next one we're going to have is at slash greet. And our get greet, this one's going to be used a template that we parsed. So we ran uh, default. It returned our engine. In our engine, we have this method load HTML glob. So it says we're going to take a pat. It's looking. It's going to take a pattern. So this pattern says, "Hey, anything in the templates folder." And here's our wildcard that ends in .html. Well, all that's going to get parsed. We got five different files here. Let's go ahead and go down to get greet. And our again on our context, the HTML method is going to take a status code, the name of our file, and we're not going to be passing anything in. So looking at greeting.html, just going to say welcome gophers. So let's see, see that in action. Welcome gophers. All right. And our next one is get greet. So looking at this one. It has slash get greet, but it has a URL parameter at the end. So we're going to need, need to grab this. So let's go to get greet name. So we're going to use context again. This time we're going to use the param method, and we're looking for a URL parameter with uh, the key name. And that's going to return that value. We're going to place it into name, and then we're going to, again going to use uh, the HTML method, status code, name of the file, and then name. So if we look at custom greeting.html, uh, we're just saying welcome, and then we're just gonna pass in that value. So let's go ahead and go. And let's just, let's go with James, James works. Welcome, James. All right. So here's our next handler. It's at path flash many, and it is a Get method. So with this one, we're going to go ahead and look at the gen data type H. So uh, many times you'll want to pass in several different things, and they're just not uh, not variables that would all be in the same struct. So uh, very often when you're passing into a template, you're going to use a map anyway. But this one has a built-in map. Take a look at that. There we go. Type H. Uh, H is a shortcut for a map which takes you know a string and returns an interface so key our key and a value so this is something you can make on your own but they just build it in there just for convenience so we're going to use gen.h which is just going to take some keys they have to be strings but you could put whatever you want on this side so we have the name carl and we're passing in a slice of string that just has four different foods so if we go over to many data. Again, we can pass in our name. So we pass in dot name to get our string for name. And then we pass in dot foods to get our slice. And then we're just going to range over that. So let's go here. There we go. So we passed in curl and we passed in our four different foods and ranged over those. Okay, so at get slash form, this one's actually the same as gets, there's, you know, is the same path as slash form, but we're gonna have two different handlers handling this. So taking a look at this, we have our get slash form and our post slash form. So one handler and then the other. Uh, this one here is just going to uh, deliver our form, so, which is just going to take a name and a favorite food. Oh, 
but when it's when we hit the submit button, it's going to take us to slash form and the method is going to be post. So the second handler is going to be initiated by us hitting the submit button. Back to here. So when the submit button is hit, it's going to be at slash form, but it's, it's going to be a method uh, of type post. And so uh, we're going to have two different variables that we need to pull. So post form returns the specified key from a post URL encoded form or multi-part form when it exists. Otherwise it returns an empty ring. So we're gonna use post form to get our name and we're gonna use post form to return our food. So again, we're gonna go ahead and use our gen.h data type, which is just a map that, you know, for the key it takes a string and then returns an anything, which is an empty interface. And if we go to our form result, it's just, we're just gonna say, hey, here's your name and here's your food. So let's go ahead and take a look at that one. All right, Carl and pizza. So when we hit submit, this is going to also be at slash form, but this now, what we just done was a get method. This one's gonna be a post. You see nothing's changed there, but it's being handled by a different handler. So welcome Carl, your favorite food is pizza. Looking in the terminal at our gen printout, we can get a lot of good information about our requests from when they were made to the status code. They were all 200, so they all were good. How long they took, as well as the method and their path. So uh, really good for debugging and just seeing if something went wrong, uh, especially with the status code or if something just took longer than expected. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our API. So we're gonna go ahead and change files. We'll stop the server change directories, there we go. I'm gonna bring this down. API stands for Application Programming Interface. We're gonna be taking requests and we're gonna be serving responses. But instead of serving back HTML, we're gonna be serving back data, or in our instance, JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. So let's say that you have a website that looks for the cheapest airline flights. Your site would, could interact with other airline APIs to find the cheapest rate. You don't need nor want an entire HTML page. We just want to go ahead and get that data on the cheapest flights. We can go ahead and create our web page with our cheapest flights from the cheapest airlines. And then we could serve that back to the HTML page to our user. So APIs facilitate interactions between other applications. So it's just one more way that connects the world that much more. Notice with our API, we have more than just get and post methods. We also have a patch and a delete method. So we could have many other methods uh, should we want to add those as well. Now remember that methods describe our intent of our request. So with a get request, uh, someone can see, okay, they're either trying to read or search for something. If they see an incoming post method, they know that we're trying to create something new. Or if it's a patch, we're trying to update a piece of uh, a piece of a resource. Or if it's delete, we're going to try and completely delete that resource. So, in our example, we're going to be working with movies. So we have our movie structs. We have our ID, title, director, and price, and we have our uh, struct tags here with these back ticks. Uh, and this is going to give some metadata on how our JSON uh, is encoded. And of course, with our movie, we're going to go ahead and have a movie slice, which is, we're just going to call it movie. So we have our The Dark Knight, Tommy Boy, and The Shawshank Redemption. So uh, looking down at Funk Main, uh, again, we're using default to go ahead and create our router. And then, of course, our router is going to run. But before that, we're going to go ahead and use the git all these different methods to uh, define at which method at certain paths, what function is going to go ahead and handle those. So our first one here, get movies. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So with get movies, as usual, we're going to pass in our context and at our context, we're going to use a method called indented JSON. So in the documentation, indented JSON serializes the given struct as pretty JSON, which is indented and inlines into the response body. It also sets the content type as application slash JSON. So this way, obviously they know, hey, this is an HTML. This is application slash JSON. We're gonna be just passing data. 
Um, it gives us warning here. We recommend that you use this only for development purposes since printing pretty JSON is more CPU and bandwidth consuming. So yes, if you don't have to put all those extra tabs in there, yeah, it's just, it's, it's going to be a lot quicker and take up less bandwidth. So we're going to go ahead and, which is this indented JSON is going to take a status code and then the data that we're passing in. So we're going to go ahead and go over to Postman. And with this, we have several different methods for this one it's going to be of a git method and it's going to be at the path slash movie so if we hit oh we better just go ahead and start up our application yep a little bit let's go ahead and hit send there we go so Looking at this, we went ahead and passed, we passed in movies. So we passed in that entire slice of movies and we got back a slice of movies. And then Jen's going to go ahead and say, Hey, everything was okay. Happened pretty quick. It was a get, it was a get method at slash path slash movie. Look at our next one. We have slash movie and it's going to take a URL parameter. So let's go ahead and go to get movie by ID and we're going to use on again on our context we're going to use the param method and we're looking for a URL parameter with the name of uh, the key of ID and so we return that value into our variable ID uh, we're going to use index so we're going to search we're going to range through all of our movies now in real life we would be using something persistent such as a database yes if we shut this down none of this you know anything we add to this or delete off this is it's just going to go back to the original uh, slice when we start back up anyway we're going to go ahead and range through the movies we're going to find that index and once we find the index of that particular movie we're going to use that we're going to pass that index in so we're only going to be returning one movie so again we're going to run uh you know on the context and then and did a json go back and let's go with number two all right, Tommy Boy. So notice that we didn't pull back all the movies. We were able to just pull one movie. And again, we get our gen response. Then at our next one here, we're going to use a post request at slash movie. And we're going to go ahead and create a movie. So create movie. Uh, we got variable uh, new movie that we're going to go ahead and create and we're going to use on the context again we have a method called bind json and we're going to go ahead and pass in uh our data which is our new movie so bind json is a shortcut for c dot must bind with uh, it's going to take an object and bind uh, binding dot json so you know with must it means it has to or else it's going to run a panic uh, must bandwidth uh binds the pass struct pointer using the specified binding engine. So that's what, you know, pointer. So that's why we're uh, giving it that address there. It will abort the request with HTTP 400 if any error occurs. So it's automatically going to go ahead and abort the request with this HTTP status code. Um, if, should we run into an error, uh, see the binding package. Um, so anyway, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to have incoming, uh, data with our post request. We're going to go ahead and bind that to our variable new movie. Uh, we're going to check for errors. We're just going to print it if we do. Um, if there is no error, so this return would make sure this wouldn't run, but say if we have no error, we're going to go ahead and append new movie to movies. And then we're going to go ahead and take uh, movies, which should have one more appended movie, you know, and go ahead and re return that data using indented the indented JSON method. So let's go back to postman. All right. So our method is going to be a post and our path is going to be at slash movie. I'm going to go ahead and click on body and okay. We have it on, go ahead and click raw if you don't have that already. And we're going to go ahead and paste in our data here. So we're going to add a fourth movie. Let's go ahead and hit send. Okay. So it looks like we got a slice of movies back. So we got movie one, two, three, and good. We have movie number four. 
as we can see, uh, was a post method at slash movie. And for this next one, we're going to go ahead and update. So this one's going to be a patch and it's going to be at slash movie and we're passing in an ID for our URL uh, parameter. So update, let's go ahead and go to the definition for update uh, movie price. So again, we're going to go ahead and take whatever that ID is. We're going to go ahead and search for that particular ID. And then we're going to take that, you know, save that into, you know, once we find it, we're going to go ahead and take, you know, key, which is you know, the index it's at, save that into our variable called index. So we're only going to change one movie. We're going to change the one movie that gets passed in. So we're going to go ahead and go ahead and set the price to $9.99. And then when we use, we send our data with indented JSON method, uh, we're just going to send that one movie, but that movie should have an updated price now. Oh, I just see how that is redundant. Uh, the ID is actually the same ID, but anyway, let's go ahead and run that real quick. We're going to go to patch and let's go ahead and change uh, movie number three, which was seven ninety nine. Let's go ahead and change that one to nine ninety nine. All right, there we go. Nine dollars and ninety nine cents. And as you can see, it was the method patch at slash movie slash three for our path. Okay, for our last one, we're going to go ahead and delete a movie. So at slash movie slash uh, URL parameter ID. Uh, we're going to run our handler of delete movie. And again, we're just going to use the ID because we only want it to, we only want to delete one movie. So we're going to go ahead and find the index, which uh, we're going to find the index of where it's at there um, for that particular ID. And then we're going to go ahead and use this append function to go ahead and just remove that. So we should be, we should go down from four movies to three movies and it should, uh, this one's going to go ahead and keep the same order, uh, anyway. And then of course we're going to return our data with, uh, indented JSON method. So passing in movie. So let's go ahead and go back to Postman. Let's go ahead and go to delete. Never hurts to be careful with that one. Let's look at which movie do we want to delete. Um, let's get rid of the first one. Go ahead and hit send. So we got Tommy, we have movie two, three, four, and yes, we deleted the first one. Now, one thing to be aware of is that we're not using any authorization as this is just for demonstration purposes. Uh, we're going to go through that middleware testing, a lot of other different stuff later. Uh, if you like the video, please like, and subscribe it really does help me out. A big thank you to every single person who's sharing this on other platforms it really does help me out. Uh, like I said, in the, the we're just kind of just scratching the surface with this. Um, you know, like I said, middleware testing, uh, routes, grouping, other different things. Uh, Jen is just really easy to use uh, for serving HTML pages and just a wonder to work with for APIs. Um, I know you can do a lot of this stuff with uh, Gorilla Mux. If you guys want to see me making a playlist for that as well, um, you know, if we get enough uh, people commenting saying that's what they want, maybe, uh, maybe we'll go ahead and do that. So uh, really appreciate the support and I'll see you in the next one.